Hi folks, Paul here. For these next three uh, video fishing journals, we'll be hunting for feeding bass on a shallow eight acre gravel quarry. That's essentially a veritable jungle of aquatic vegetation. Just to see what we can do with such a mess. <laughs> if you haven't already seen it, the background for these, uh, what I'm calling jungle warfare journals, is video fishing journal number 21. To get the most out of these next videos, the whys beneath the what and how, Video Fishing Journal 21 will be helpful uh, to learn about just what we're looking for and why. Those bassy spots within that jungle. As we put it in Journal 21, we're targeting feeding bass where they're at. And in this one, number 22, Video Fishing Journal 22, we're expecting the bass to come up to the surface for our lures. I'm titling it frogging, even though it has nothing to do with actual frogs. You see, the so-called frog lures have little to do with real frogs the majority of the time, and just about everything to do with bait fish, um, bluegills in particular. Okay, in this one, Video Fishing Journal 22, we're targeting the bluegill hunters. Okay, summer often means dense vegetation in the shallows, and with it comes some serious changes in how bass operate and how we often have to fish for them. Bluegills are a sunfish species that, uh, while they handle heavy vegetation really well, they spend considerable time feeding in the open water column okay, for emerging insects and large zooplankton, and also at the surface for um, insects on, in, in the surface film. This feeding activity both exposes those bluegills in these jungles and while their attention is focused on feeding, they're vulnerable to attacks by bass. Uh, and for their part, the bass are waiting and watching for such opportunities. Remember, uh, bass cannot feed at will. The conditions and circumstances for these outings were similar. Typical Colorado days with uh, sunny, mile-high skies in the mornings giving way to building clouds and uh, thunderstorms in the afternoons that then dissipate by late evening. What's cool about this weather pattern is that it, it's allowed me to compare both brilliant sun and deep clouds on almost any fishing day. The clouds are a big help, especially on such shallow waters, um, as the reduced lighting they bring seems to spark the food chain and uh, makes all the fish less spooky overall. On the flip side, the bright sun seems to put a damper on um, at least the, the consumer end of the food chain and overall makes fish more spooky. Since this pond has few actual surface mats this time of year. We'll be relying on open pockets in the vegetation for our topwater fishing. And that sun makes this game tougher for us anglers, trying to cash in on that surface-oriented activity. The bass are much spookier under the bright sun and possibly uh, simply less willing to expend the energy to chase such evasive prey under bright conditions when that prey can see them so much better. They can see them coming. There's a lot more to this story, of course, but this suffices for what we'll be doing in this video fishing journal, asking those bass to come up for topwater lures. This is a time and place for breaking out the heavy clubs, medium heavy to heavy, and even extra heavy, uh, depending on where you live and the cover you're having to deal with and preferably casting tackle because of the torque these reels can provide. Um, and, and torque, that's cranking power, we will need as bass, even two pounders, are expert at diving headfirst into cover when hooked. This behavior didn't appear with fishing rods and hooks, by the way. It's an effective strategy bass use when pursued by a predator. They dive down and into cover headfirst to hide until the danger's passed. Um, I, I've even had uh, hooked bass dive into muskrat holes um, and one into a cinder block 
um, actually, um, just, ha just having their tails sticking out. <laughs> so lesson one, tackle up. <laughs> Uh, for my frogging, uh, on this particular outing, I used a fast, medium, heavy casting rig. 30-pound braid and uh, a 17-pound, uh, that'd be 15,000, so 015 uh, nylon leader. This is probably about as light as you'd want to go for this type of fishing. But for the size of bass that I have in this pond um, and the predominantly soft vegetation and, and open pockets I was targeting, um, it's adequate. Most often, though, uh, uh, froggers, people that do this an awful lot, use 50-pound braid and up straight. That's sans leader. Um, and a fast to extra fast heavy stick uh, for the hook setting power these rods can provide. Frogs, okay, tend to carry heavy irons, uh, heavy gauge hooks. And our line is often fouled in vegetation when we go to set that hook. Um, so that has to be accounted for in, in, in the hook set, and you need power. Okay, lesson two. <laughs> the trick to hooking bass with hollow body topwaters, because of their buoyancy and the protected hook points they have, is to make sure those bass completely have that lure before rearing back to set the hook. This means wait a moment before reacting to that explosion. It can be tough to do, especially when you haven't been topwater fishing um, in a while. Bass engulf prey, sucking it back to the tongue and then the tooth pads deep in the throat. They're, they're crushers. It happens fast, but not the split second that the water explodes where your, your frog is. Wait just a moment. Lesson three, the trick to landing bass in this slop is to get their heads up above that slop and, and keep it coming, keep reeling. Try not to let them turn back down. Nice thing about topwater hooked fish is they're already on top when you set that hook. <laughs> Can't say the same for the bites we get when punching. Uh, those fish are usually already down in the bowels of that cover um, or already headed that way when we set the hook. Uh, but, but that's a different story. One we'll explore in this same pond in our next uh, video fishing journal, number 23. Okay, that's the scoop. Let's go insert ourselves into the food chain and hunt up some of those bluegill hunters. Okay, I'm going to show you how to paddle through slop. What happens is... <laughs> This is Elodia, um, and uh, uh, that coontail and milfoil can just hang up, and that's what holds you down. Your boat's sitting on top, so what you've got to do is get above that stuff. There you go, and then you can kick over the top of it. Push it down with your heels, and you got it. There's bluegills way back in these rushes here. There's water that goes way back in there. It's all flooded and I can hear them kissing in there. Oh, there was a bass. Not a big one. It was fun. Buried me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Guess that was on for that whole thing. Whoa. All right, I gotta get a grip of you, honey. You are a dark water bass, that's for sure. Holy moly, let's spin and get some sun going. Where is the sun? There we go. 
<laughs> suck the nose right in on there. I got a popper now. All right. One. <laughs> Interestingly, the water is a lot colder than that bass. That bass was surface. The surface temperature is, you know, over 80 degrees now. And um, it feels like bath water. Right underneath it, it's, it's cold. And that bass was bath water warm. That's kind of interesting. You've got some uh, carped out water here. All right, so I just had a bust right there. I don't know if I want to bomb a frog on them, but that was a mature bass bust. Oh, oh I just landed on him. See, that's what I didn't want to do. Oh, I just landed on his head. Exactly what I didn't want to do. a little quieter. Yeah, I just spooked him out of there. It's too loud. What would you throw in there? <sighs> That's what you do is you'd lock it down with your thumb. Didn't wait for him. <sighs> Paul? <sighs> if you don't feel the fish, don't hit him. Don't get hung there. You can't throw this frog through the reeds. Whoop, here comes it. Oh. Oh. <sighs> All right. Guess we'll have to try that again. Pass that opening. Oh boy. Don't catch there. There we go. Let's hope that's a bass. My line might have spooked a carp, but then it could have been a bass chasing bluegills. I think, I think the line might have spooked a carp, but oh, dang it. 10 feet to the left, 10 feet to the right. Got him. And my drag's not down very far. It's not a big fish. But I'll take it. I'll take every one I can get. <laughs> Good job of keeping him up on top. Oh, get your jaw off of there. I'll bet my camera's not on. Hey, it is. What do you know? <laughs> All right. 
get some sun on her. And there's uh, an infection. That's a fungal infection. Oh, yeah, typical summer condition. All right, big frog hooks. Don't like those, man. Especially when you gotta battle them through so much cover. There it is. There, that was as big as that um, barb was. That was relatively easy to get out. Another 15er. All right, hon. I'm not sure if I even had my camera in a good space. Well, this spot, this, this is helping me out because um, I've been hitting fish out in this, this central area. Uh, there, 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 um, there, there, there. Although they can't be seen at high water, the humps and bars left from the mining operations are revealed by changes in vegetation structure. That is, the, the type and growth patterns of that vegetation. We'll talk more about this in Journal 23 when we start using a bottom contact presentation uh, by, by flipping, pitching, punching. For now, the convolutions created by the irregular bottom makes for better hunting for both bluegills, bass, and us. In particular, for us throwing topwaters, those hump and bar tops are the cause of many of the open pockets that we're targeting. <sighs> Haven't converted on all of them, but I waited on that one. Good man. You bluegill hunters out here, maybe? Oh, don't, don't. <clears throat> it hit pretty hard. Come on out of there. Whoa. Let's hope that that's... Yeah, it looks good. Got him. He chased a bluegill up, is what he did, <laughs> and then came to me. Oh, I don't want to have to go get you. <laughs> Guess I won't have to. Remember the seven foot rod, you need to leave extra line out. <clears throat> Who do we got? Keep having to turn this camera down and then forget to turn it back up. Mm. All right. All right. Some sunshine on her. How am I gonna do this? I guess we'll do it this way. Oh, barely hooked, honey. All right, look at that stomach. So, I assume you're a bluegill chaser. I don't see anything sticking out of your throat. I'm gonna attempt. A lavage, and I don't know if it's going to work. Sorry, honey. Mm. 
no. And I don't think I'm going to try that too many times. <sighs> What's that in your esophagus? I did bring something up. Oh. <sighs> there it is. <laughs> uh, a pretty good sized bluegill. That's a spine. Um, and, uh... Yep, those are ribs. So that's about a four inch bluegill. And I'm gonna try to give that back to you, honey bear. <laughs> Hopefully you'll keep that. All right, oh. okay, okay, okay. Okay, well that sort of worked. Check your knot. So that, that fish, that was pretty cool, chased a bluegill up. That's a bluegill hunter. Um, chased a bluegill up and um, busted it close by. Um, actually chased it up from under that mat right there. So that's a mat. Um, and there's fish around me. And then my... <laughs> not a frog my bluegill came right into that little open pocket just at the right time That's only 18 inches, so two feet of water right there. Probably not the best place to land right on the pocket. There's a... There we go. Well, I guess it was just fine to do. <laughs> I saw the... Oh! Dang, man. Oh, I hit, there's a log there. I, I scraped over a log, I think. <clears throat> hmm. Here comes a bass. Missed it twice. He missed it again. Oh, nice. Whatever that was about. Here he comes. Whoa, did he smash it hard? Do you see that? <laughs> That's that same fish. Same type of hit, but he, he got it this time. Oh, keep him up. I guess he's not going anywhere. Oh. All right, finally, <laughs> finally. <sighs> Hello. <laughs> yeah, you're in pretty darn good shape for a... Uh... Well, I'll tell you, the water temperatures are ideal. It just hasn't gotten that hot this year. Okay, how did that go in? in... There it is. Okay. Work against the, uh, the, the bend of the hook. All right. Yeehaw. Fifteener. That's what they usually are in here. Mature ones.
<laughs> Boom. Gone. Well, I got you. <laughs> You're the one. You're the one I missed the other day. I should probably skedaddle out of here, actually. Mm -hmm.